Hello and welcome to email writing. In this lecture you will learn how to write an email fit for a level 2 writing exam. So let's go through the email layout first of all. Okay, so we have the to box and your from box will already be done. So the to and from box will already be filled out for you. The cc box isn't necessarily important and there will also be a subject also written for you. And so you are also all very aware of how to write an email and what an email looks like. Uh, because that is our main correspondence, so I'm quite confident that you'll be able to do this question quite easily. So, let's have a look at how to lay out an email for the answer. The address bar and subject bar will already be completed on the exam paper, okay, so I've just mentioned that. You need to start with your salutation, so your greeting. A formal greeting, so the email will tell you if it's going to be formal or informal, or you can kind of get a gist when you read the, um, the exam question. So if you're replying to a friend talking about what you've done over the summer, it'll be quite informal. But if you're writing a complaint, it'll be quite formal. So if it's formal, you need to say something like good morning or good afternoon, Mrs. Patel or Mr. Patel or whoever you're writing to. Try and make sure you use their name in a formal email. If it's informal, you can say something like hi and with their first name. Now the main body is the same as a letter, but we don't use dear or yours sincerely in an email. And I'll just go through the layout like a letter would be without the dear or yours sincerely for an email. So the introduction. So after you've written your salutation, your greeting, so hi or good morning, good afternoon, you need to tell the reader why you're emailing them. So you might be complaining about something, you might be uh, asking about facilities that they have, you might be asking about a job, something like that. So anything that uh, you are writing about, you need to write an introduction. Paragraph one will be to inform the reader, uh, inform, inform the reader about the event or the service or the goods or whatever it is that you've got to um, email them out about, and uh, you know if it's a complaint, why you're complaining. So basically, why you're writing to them would be the first paragraph. Okay, it's not always going to be a complaint. So why why you are you writing to them? Paragraph two: tell the reader why you are upset or not happy, or tell the reader more about what it is that you're you're writing to them about. You'll get all this information in the question, okay? Paragraph three, tell them what you want them to do. So if it is an e uh, it, if it is a complaint, you'll want a refund, a replacement or compensation, something like that. And then your close, okay? So again, if it's a complaint, stay calm, I look forward to your reply, or if it's an um a job application or you're inquiring about a job, you can say something else, um, you can say the same, I look forward to your reply, or thank you so much for taking the time to read this, blah, blah, blah. If it is a complaint, I hope this matter can be settled amicably, and I look forward to your reply, something like that. I'll go through an example email answer, so you can get a better idea of what you can write. And don't forget to print your name at the bottom. So, here is an exam question. You work as an events coordinator for Start a Sport. And the, they, are, they have written this email to you. <clears throat> Dear colleague, as you know, we are looking to expand the starter sport campaign and we will require both indoor and outdoor sports and fitness facilities throughout the year. St Augustine's School in the Perifields area has some of these facilities we are looking for and Perifields has been identified as one of the inner city areas with particularly low levels of sports participation. I need you to write to the head teacher, Mrs Janet Green, to persuade her to offer her facilities free of charge. Her email address is janet.green at uh, augustines.ac.uk don't forget we are a charity we need use of their facilities in the evenings weekends and during summer holidays remember that a summer uh, remember that a number of local businesses have funded new equipment this equipment will be made available for use by the students of the school if the head teacher allows us to use their premises please contact me if you have any queries yours sincerely melanie weed campaign manager Start a sport, encouraging access to sport in inner city communities. Badminton, tennis, table tennis, basketball, netball, hockey, trampolining, boxing, gymnastics, swimming, volleyball, squash, judo, aerobic, football, cricket and athletic. Your task is to write a formal email to the school to request the use of their facilities. It's a 26 mark question and it needs to be between 250 and 300 words. Again, that is not as much as you might think. So, again, you will be assessed on presenting information or ideas concisely, logically and persuasively. Try and use some of those persuasive language techniques we talked about in the reading lectures. You need to use a range of sentence structures, including complex sentences and paragraphs, to organise written communication effectively. Complex sentences just means longer sentences with the use of the correct punctuation and grammar. I'll go through some of those as we go through the answer. 
but again, I'm quite sure that you are already using complex complex sentences sentences in everyday life, and I don't need to go into it in too much detail unless I pick something out in your work that you sent me. You need to make sure you structure and format the information properly, or appropriately, sorry. Punctuating text using commas, apostrophes, and inverted commas accurately. And ensure written work is fit for purpose and audience with accurate spelling and grammar that support clear meaning. Okay, so that is what you will be assessed on. So try and make that the best you can. Okay, here is an example answer, approximately 280 words. And it is to Janet Green and the subject is start a sport. Now, first of all, this learner has not put a salutation. So they've missed marks because they haven't put dear, uh, they haven't put good morning, Mrs. Green or good morning, Janet. Um, so they need to put something like that. Um, okay, so even though they've missed the salutation, uh, let's go through the answer anyway. This is still a pass, so just be aware, but please make sure you don't miss out those marks on the salutation. My name is Wendy Baker. I'm working with Start a Sport campaign. Uh, and we would like to bring sports to the Perifields area. I'm writing to you because your school is in the centre of Perifields and has some of the facilities we would need to offer the best sports going. So, first of all, facilities is spelt wrong, so we've got a spelling mistake. Perifields is a um, place, so it needs to be a capital P, and um, at the end there it says the best sports going. So it's a formal email, so the best sports going isn't necessarily the correct language to use there, so just be aware of that. But it's a very nice starting paragraph. They have said who they are, which is great, why, uh, where, who they work for, and um, why they are writing. Okay, lovely first paragraph. Okay, as head teacher, again, head teacher needs a capital H, I'm sure you will welcome another opportunity to involve the community that surrounds your school. Starter sport, okay, again, incorrect spelling, and here, believes that a good sport programme, so, um, programme is spelt incorrectly, um, it needs to be du double M and an E on the end because it's a programme for people to do something. Um, they've said that sport has got a grammar error there because I think it means sports programme. can benefit the community in many ways. Our great programme will get together, language a little bit too informal, all ages and abilities, and they will get fitter and socialise at the same time. Socialise in England is an S, not a Z, so they've missed that one out. Um, full stop, missing. In addition, spelling error, to this, all the new sports equipment funded by local businesses will be given to the school to use. So they're persuading her by saying that if you let us use your facilities, we will let the school use our, our um, equipment that has been donated. At the moment, we have new table tennis tables, rackets for tennis and badminton. Here, don't use that. It's a formal email. You've got to use the word and. And professional quality gymnastic mats, to name but a few, standing ready. St Augustine's School... Augustine's needs an apostrophe, has some of the best, because it belongs to that school, St Augustine's, it's their school, has some of the best indoor and outdoor sports, sports, yes, facilities in the area, including a lovely swimming pool. Did you know one in four children, no space there, so you need a space, in the Perifield area can't swim? Starter Sport thinks getting everyone to swim is really important because it is so close to the sea. To do this, we would like to use your pool because it is too far to travel to New Bodden. Now, too far is double double O. If you would like me to do a lecture on um, spelling um, different words like two, two, and two, so homophones and uh, can't remember the other one. <laughs> homophones and the other one, where things are spelt the same but sound differently, or spelt differently but sound the same, uh, mean something different. Okay, we can go through a lecture on that. Just let me know. And if there are a few people wanting it, then I'll put a lecture together for that. Um, so too far to travel to New Bodden. Okay, so again, she is trying to be persuasive here and allow them to use the pool. They could even be more persuasive than that. I don't think they're being persuasive enough, in my opinion. We hope you will see how great our project will be for the community and want your school to be part of it. I hope I will soon have the opportunity to chat about it with you. Again, chat is a bit informal. We want it more formal. Thank you, and then you needed a, um, 
an end name, so you need to put your name at the end, which they've missed, so they've missed marks there. Again, I wouldn't have just put thank you, I'd have put thank you so much for taking the time out to read this email, and I really hope to hear from you soon, something a bit like that, and definitely put your name. So there are a few um, problems with this email. Again, it's still a pass, but it's a low pass, so I want you to try and notice those things that have gone wrong in there, um, and correct them when you're doing your emails. So, here, relevant detail. Yes, there was relevant detail, but they only scored two out of three. Third bullet point has not been addressed. Okay, using facilities free of charge. You need to make sure you address everything that they've asked you to address in the question. Okay, concise, two out of two. Okay, it was very concise, no issues. Logical order, two out of two. It was in a logical order. It was persuasive enough by the looks of this. I would have been a bit more persuasive. Some good persuasion. Example, I'm sure you will welcome our great programme. Okay, so they're using nice positive words there. Welcome and great programme. Format, one out of one. Address of the recipient and subject line completed. Well, obviously, that's already going to be completed anyway because it's already done for you in the exam, so they're easy marks. Structure. Zero out of two for structure. There was no salutation or valediction, so there was no greeting or name at the end. No sender's name at the end of the email, okay? So we need to make sure you do those things to gain those marks. Language was two out of three. Four language issues because it wasn't formal enough. Spelling, there was five spelling errors in a text of acceptable length, so they only lost one mark there, two out of three. Punctuation, they lost two marks, there were eight punctuation errors in a text of acceptable length. So I still think two out of four is quite high, which is nice uh, for you guys if you do make some mistakes. And grammar, three out of four, four grammar errors in a text of acceptable length. So the more you write, um, and the less mistakes there are, the more marks you'll get. So if you write a nice big paragraph, or two paragraphs that have um, a few mistakes in you'll get more marks because you've written more but there's less mistakes if you know what I mean. Now this student has only just passed with 18 out of 26. Now if you had uh, less spelling errors, you'd done your salutations and um, you'd addressed everything, you'd have got one more there, one more there if you hadn't done the incorrect language, two more there so that's four more marks and let's see five more marks Okay, so that's 23 out of 26 if they'd have just done those things. So just think how easy it might be to uh, pass the email writing question, okay? Right, so I hope that was that made sense. Um, if you need to go back through the video, please do. So well done, and I'll see you in the le next lecture. Thank you very much.